Hello bees, beautiful souls and besties. So this is my first YouTube video and I'm stressing out, but let's go! Okay, so first thing first, I need this because basically I just needed to write down the order, what I want to say, because otherwise I would be changing the topic every five seconds and everyone will be lost and I would never end. So this is just for me to help uh, to remember what is the order. And um, yeah, I will be basically fangirling over uh, the new movie of Park Chan-wook, uh, Decision to Live, because it's a masterpiece, at least in my opinion. And honestly, when I think about Korean cinema, I I think I was... I started watching more movies a few years ago, and the first movie I watched was Snowpiercer, and then I watched my first K-drama, and I was like, okay, that's it, they have only two moods. It's blood and violence, or it will be you're pretty, I cry, sha -la, 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 la which honestly I love, but um, actually there is much more, like in both cases there is much more to discover, and speci especially in uh, Korean cinema, after Snowpiercer I also watched, of course, Parasite, Old Boy, Forgotten, I still have Nightmares, but it was such a great movie, and Mm, I think, especially when it comes to Park Chan-wook, he's very meticulous about portraying the emotions, relations between the people, and he cares about details, he's creating metaphors, and this is what I want to discuss. Part 1. Metaphor. Sea and mountains. Everything in the movie says that Sore is the sea. Her clothes, wallpaper in her house, her notebook, the light when she's telling Hajun, the good night story, the pills, just everything. Uh, even the turtles, there is this, mm, this small metaphor that uh, the turtles suck uh, Hajun's finger and it's like it doesn't let it go and, and Sore as a sea is the same for Hajun. Um, and if you want to know more about it, I would definitely recommend to check um, Karsten Rehnquist's videos and Spikima movies. Uh, actually, thanks to the second YouTuber, I noticed something amazing. I couldn't see that even after watching the movie a few, few more times, but in this scene, uh, you can see for, for a millisecond a woman's face in the waves. And this is Sora. Even Park Chan Wook um, confirmed that in one of the interviews. So I would definitely recommend those two YouTubers check them because they did a great, great job with analysis of the movie. Now I appreciate it even more because at the end, at the beginning, no, at the beginning, no, at the end of the beginning of my journey with the movie, I was really devastated. I wanted a K drama ending, uh, but we know life is not always like that. Okay, it's complicated because <sighs> this is a love story, but I wouldn't say it's beautiful because of the sad ending or because they had amazing relationship. Actually, there was there is a dose of toxicity in their relationship, but I think what is very very beautiful is this caring about details and portraying Sora. I'm I'm a, I'm especially fan of Sora. She changes like the sea changes, she's never the same. Um, and Hajun, he's like a solid rock. For example, he's running after criminals up, um, he's on the mountains, he's on the top of the building, um, and he's more stable, his life has order, uh, even when it's kind of messy because of insomnia and just not being happy with his life, but his life definitely has much more order. He works, he has home, He every weekend he comes back home. So let's say he was stable. Mm, and why use this metaphor? Why use those opposites? Well, Karsten argues it's that because of um, highlighting their love to each other and also to show a different approach in the characters of life to life. Um, and then there is this one scene uh, when Sarah is dying, we see, we have this beautiful shot, there is a mountain 
destroyed by the sea. And I think that's what is, that's the metaphor. Nothing can last forever, even, even the mountain. If we have some expectations, some pictures of someone in our head, it might change. And we should let it go because wave will go and go. I don't know if it makes sense, but for me, I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's interesting. And this scene was absolutely genius when it comes to cinematography and concept. However, for me, the most beautiful scene in the movie is when Sora is looking, searching in dictionary for the word shattered. And you will see why. Part two, language. Sometimes I complain about complexity of other languages uh, and that it would be better if we all can speak one language, but then I'm like, oh no, wait, wait, Anna, no, definitely no. Uh, it's wonderful to have this diversity because we have so many words in our mother tongue to explain what we feel, even if we are not able to do this. That's, that's really interesting that we are not able to explain what we feel. And this is also why I think we need this metaphor like uh, Park Chan-wook used. Like, we need a metaphor to talk about our emotions sometimes. Um, and also when we're trying to explain the same feelings in other languages, we are realizing that, oh, they don't use those kinds of words to explain this, or they have completely different sentences. Because like when you're trying to say something in another language, you learn a lot about its culture, because language is very often rooted in the reality of the country. And I don't think it's a random thing that Sora is a Chinese woman and Hajun is Korean man. Uh, I think the language plays a huge role in this movie and I found this amazing article The Ethics of Love in Decision to Live uh, by Han Guyen. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing. Uh, I have found it in the website Korea Open Access Journals and probably I didn't get half of it because I don't, I don't speak Korean. It's just using the translator and of course we know that translators are not the most accurate but even with this translation, I could understand a little bit better the genius of this word because um, the author of the article refers to Alan Badier who thought that love is an exceptional event because love is not simply about two people meeting and their inward looking relationship. It is a construction, a life that is being made no longer from the perspective of one, but from the perspective of two. And sometimes this requires courage to destroy the self in order to discover the other, as Han Guyen wrote. Okay, so I think this is something that both characters did at some point, because Sora is a Chinese woman who lives in Korea and who struggles with language, while ha is a police officer who is very proud of his work, he's very dedicated to it, he lives according to his values, he's rooted in his reality, and he was very stable until he met Sora. And yet he still lets her run away. I mean, like, not run away, but... He does not imprison her, right? So that's good. And he pretends that the uh, evidence does not exist. After Hajin told her to throw away the phone, which was basically the evidence of her committing the murder, uh, she searches for the word shattered. She really wants to understand. But she receives Hajin words uh, differently than a native speaker would. And she understands that he loves her. And this is what makes their relationship even more asymmetrical, uh, how Han Guyen noticed. The message was sent and received asymmetrically. That means speaker failed to explain himself, but not because he wanted to mislead the other person, but rather that his mind wasn't used properly by language. And when she said about this asymmetry, I realized it was also visible, okay, it wasn't that visible because I haven't seen that for the first time, but uh, this asymmetry is from the beginning. When we, for example, have the scene with Sushi, uh, 
the position of the fish and the other fish with um, with the cells, they are asymmetrical towards each other. And at the same time, it is the position of the two characters uh, in the movie, which is mind-blowing. And also the thing with mirrors, it's brilliant because we have conversation, but we see them in the mirrors. And also I didn't notice that first time, but when they're speaking, the one person is blurred and the other is, you can see this person clear. And this is strange because uh, they are not looking to each other like straight, but they are looking like that. So it kind of makes their relationship asymmetrical from the beginning. The visuality of the movie focuses on um, symmetry and repetition. At the beginning, uh, when Hajin follows Sore, their movements are just synchronous. I mean, like they're. Um, Oh my god, how you call that? When you're driving a car and you're oh, turning, turning light, turning le light. Yeah, it's like when you want to turn left and right at the same time. It's basically me all the time. I never know what I, where I should go. So when you're turning light or when you're turning right or left, um, they move or just, they, they are moving the same way, like all the time. Uh, when she observes him, like she observes him, he observes her, the same perspective. Um, and at the end of the movie, we know, like, we can kind of think that they won't be together because their movements are not synchronized anymore. She turns right, he turns left, or maybe the opposite. I always mix this. Don't tell it to the police because they're gonna take my driver license. Never mind. So the asymmetry between them increases. Sore fails to explain what she feels because of the language. She would love to tell more. She would love to understand more. But she loves and she's able to see the perspective of two. She so she sees that Hajun is broken, is shattered. And she understands his word. I mean, like, not everything, but at least she's trying. And I think there is much more deeper. I didn't find it in any paper about it, but I would say that even if we have this, we have this ending, and at the beginning it gave me vibe of Romeo and Juliet, but it is not the same. She's not only... Like, she's not sacrificing herself to only give him freedom. She also trying to find freedom for herself because she is tired. She knows that she cannot be with him because he is married and she does not want to ruin that. She loves him, but she has no one. She knows that she still will be depending on men with power uh, to save her life in Korea because otherwise they're going to deport her to uh, China when they're gonna murder her, like kill her for her committing the murder, which wasn't the murder. It's just so complicated and I think Sore is heartbreaking character because she has no one. I feel that Pak Chan-wook, cinematograph, screenwriter, actors, everyone involved in the movie created masterpiece uh, on visual, linguistic and metaphorical level. And I'm gonna link all the sources down below and please give the creators a lot of love. And also if there's someone, if I'm lucky and there's someone here who speaks Korean, uh, please let me know down in the comment. Even if it will be like five years later, if someone's gonna find this video after five years later, I'm gonna check it, definitely. What was that? I'm gonna check it. Uh, please let me know if, if there is something in Korean language that make that makes this movie even more special and interesting from a linguistic perspective. And I, I would be very grateful. And also, if you uh, made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for your time. Uh, please uh, type down with the wave emoji in the comment and let me know what you think about the movie. Um, and definitely watch the movie. 
Uh, so one more time, thank you for your time. Uh, I know it was chaotic because I'm chaotic, but maybe maybe someone will find it interesting. I don't know. Uh, just thank you for your time and I wish you a wonderful day. See you!